In my last video, we have seen an iterative method for finding a square root of a number, and this is a continuation part two of that. In this video, uh, in the last video, it was just a mechanics of the method you have seen. And now we'll discuss why it works. Why why should it even uh, result in finding a square root of a number? So uh, the ex let me quickly review what we have discussed last time. There is a number n for which you want to find square root. So you start with initial guess a, find out n by a, and then take the difference of that. If the difference is considerable, then you take the average of a and n by a, and with the new average number as a, again you find out n by a, and do this process until the difference vanishes to somewhere very close to zero. And what you end up with the final number n minus a is your uh, solution, v is the square root of the number n. But why should it work? Why not in you get any other result? Uh, let me try and explain it rather intuitively in this way. Uh, there is, let's say, the number n here somewhere, and and the square root of n may be somewhere here. And let's say, uh, let's say this is zero, and our we started with initial guess somewhere here. Now, uh, starting with this initial guess, I am finding n, n by a. The n by a is uh, will be falling somewhere between root n and n, somewhere, say, somewhere here. The reason for this is, if uh, this n by a was in between these two, uh, a and root n, we would not go all the way up to n when we multiply a and n by a. So one number has to be less than root n and one number has to be more than root n. Only then the product of a and n by a would uh, match a. Uh, then what we were doing, we were trying to find the difference between these two. And uh, let's say the difference between these two is somewhere like this. Since this difference is there, we find the average. Uh, so somewhere here, let's say. So this number would be my new a. And using this new a, uh, I would again make uh, one more calculation of n by a. This time, since a is on the one, this side of uh, root n, the n by a would fall somewhere here. Uh, and then again, the difference we measure, and the difference has reduced compared to last time. Um, this time again, we uh, keep uh, repeating this. We get a new average of uh, this a and n by a to be some new n by a somewhere here, let's say. And then uh, we get a a over on the, the other side, and this process repeats. And finally, when will it stop? It will stop when uh, we both a and n by a both meet root n uh, there. So this is kind of an intuitive explanation. We started at this point, we jumped over here, and then we started from there. We jumped back somewhere here, and then we jumped back. And this jumping around uh, stops when we finally meet root n. So this is the intuitive understanding of the uh, method. Why? Uh, this uh, above explained method should result in a final number which is uh, square root of n. Now, uh, we will come back to this picture. Uh, the question that now we are trying to explore is what if what if uh, the number is uh, negative? Will it work in the case of negative number? Let's uh, see what the Excel uh, sheet has to say about this. And then we'll uh, come back and try it out. Uh, so here uh, we have 38, so why not make it minus some negative number, let's say minus 30. Uh, uh, we know that there is no square root for minus 30, there is no real world square root for minus 30. So let's see what this uh, iterative process results in. Uh, we are getting some uh, strange numbers, the difference is not going to zero, the difference is minus 11, minus 60, then become 30, 40, so it's quite jumping around and uh, the difference is not going to zero. Uh, earlier case, in just three or four steps, we used to get zero as a difference, but now uh, it is taking more steps. So how do you explain this? Well, one way to explain this is that since the number n is negative, either a or n minus a, both have to be negative. One of them have to be negative, sorry. So if a is negative, n by a should be positive, and if a is positive, n by a would be negative. That's what we find here, the case. Uh, for example, this is minus 29.75, and this is plus 1, and this is minus, this is plus, and whereas here this is plus, and this is minus, and so on. So uh, the process is designed such a way 
that it will stop when both a and n minus a are equal but the condition is that both of them have to be one of them have to be negative of the other so which number is negative of itself and equal well that is zero and obviously uh, zero can't be the square root of this uh, minus 30 so while this process goes on we will never find that number that real world number which matches this condition the condition uh, again let me tell you is that one of them should be negative other should be positive and both of them should be equal so the logical answer is only zero for that and therefore zero is but then zero into zero is still zero so there is no square root for minus 30. Now uh, it's interesting quite to take a chart of this and really see what is happening. Uh, I select this and I'll insert a chart for that. Uh, let me uh, use a line chart with some dots. Okay, the chart uh, appears something like this. Whether you can see, yeah. So uh, the blue line indicates the value of a, and the orange line indicates the value of a minus a. And we are looking for a, a situation where both of them are merging with each other and you know go together. But uh, as you can see here, both of them are kind of playing a seesaw game. Uh, one goes up and the other goes down, and and so on. So uh, for example. Uh, let me try, I've tried out 78, it's quite interesting with initial guess of say 7. So here you can see that there is a nice uh, seesaw pattern that you are happening and, and we are waiting for these two uh, A and N by, N by A to meet but they are not meeting and we know why they are not meeting and this is the reason why there is no square root for the negative number. So all in all, because of this, uh, we were discussing about this iterative method for calculating square root, uh, why it works, we have understood, and and then what happens in the case of negative number we have seen. And if this number was positive, let's say 78, uh, we could see that picture where both of this A and N by N is A nicely merge uh, to give a solution of something like 8.83, and, and the problem comes when they are negative. Okay. Uh, I still have some more time to discuss one more interesting thing. What if I start with a negative number as initial guess? Uh, where will that lead to? Uh, for example, my uh, let's say the solution is 81 and uh, we all know that 81 square root is 9 and as expected here we are ending up with 9. Uh, n by a is covered. Yeah. But what if I start with let's say minus 3, where does that lead to? As you have, you might have guessed it leads to minus 9. Uh, by the way, minus 9 is also the square root of 81, therefore that is also properly correct. So if you start with initial guess on the positive side, you will nicely settle on the positive square root of the number. If you start with the initial guess negative side, even if I take something as big as minus 5000, it would all uh, come down and meet uh, 9 somewhere in the end. Okay. So uh, I think this uh, is something interesting about the numbers and their square roots. See you in the next video. Thanks.